Hi there, this is Ranjit and in this week of Geeky Ranjit Explains, if you have followed my last episode, we were talking about the difference between a modem and a router and uh, basically a router, uh, what a router can does is take a single internet connection that you get from your ISP and if you even have let's say 10 or 15 devices, you can then use the internet connection and I'm going to talk about how it does it and it does with something called a NAT and also it has a DHCP server and first thing that you need to understand is that uh, your ISP, when you connect to your ISP, it assigns you a IP address. This is required and uh, we are currently using the IP4 which has around uh, 4.3 billion uh, internet addresses. This is the limit but again not all of them are available, some are reserved. So actually we have a quite a bit less and uh, also it's common for households. For example in my household I have a single internet connection but about 10 devices that are connected. So we need devices like router and let me explain you about NAT now. So in this video I'm going to talk about NAT and DHCP server and to explain you uh, let me right now let's say this is your ISP internet and we have uh, your router sitting here that's connected to your internet and now you have your devices for example this can be your PC1, PC2, tablet, uh, smartphone etc and uh, uh, for example, your ISP actually provides you a uh, internet IP address. It will be a generic IP address that your ISP uh, assigns you something like this, whatever, whatever, whatever. whatever. This is a public IP address and uh, all the, the your ISP can reach your router using this IP address. But as you're using a router and you have multiple devices connected, for example, without the router only one device can be connected to the internet. As you have a router and if you open up the internet connection, you'll find some addresses like this. Instead of this address, your PC would be assigned addresses like uh, this. 16192, 168, 1.3, so forth and uh, so on. And what are these? These are actually private IP addresses that are local to your network. This router has created a LAN and these are private. And the problem is the internet directly, this of uh, whatever request is made cannot be reached directly to this computer because this is having this local IP address. And the NAT handles this. For example, let's say the PC1 has requested the web page. It uh, handles this and takes the web page and actually passes on to this PC. So your NAT routers NAT is the mediator between your local uh, private LAN that has, it has created and the public internet so using this way your NAT can act, uh, provide internet to multiple devices just using a single internet connection so this is the main function of NAT and the full form for that is network address translator so this is the job of the NAT we also have NAT in uh, multiple variants. Uh, in home routers, generally, we do not have, have hardware level NAT. We have software level NATs, and they are good enough for even like they can access, uh, what do you say, even about 15 to 20 devices without any issues. But some of the high end uh, routers have hardware level NAT, and uh, if uh, you have a lot of device attached, you might invest in a router that is having a hardware level NAT. Generally, it speeds up and does not slow down your network. Uh, when many devices are attached but again if you have a casual network for less than 10 devices a regular router will be more than enough again if you noticed uh, we, we had our router here and we had multiple IP address multiple devices that were connected and all of them were getting the IP address on them and if you noticed uh, these IP address are being assigned automatically for example you don't have to open up your computer IP settings and every time when you log on or switch on your what do you say tablet you have to enter these IP addresses the subnet mask and all those details that are required to access the internet these are automatically added and this is done by DHCP server this also runs on your router so if your DHCP server was not there whenever you are attaching a new device to your network for example let's say tablet or a smartphone you would have to manually enter all these things so this thing is handled by the DHCP server and generally in most of the routers this is enabled by default 
but if you want to disable it i don't know why you can disable it but if you do that then you have to manually enter all the ip addresses to the devices that are attached to your router so now let me come back to nat and I, as i was telling this is your internet and let's say we'll add a router in the modem in this equation modem and if you have seen my last video uh, and this is attached to a router and your router is attached to your multiple devices like PCs, whatever, 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 whatever. And uh, if you have ever played uh, games on Xbox and online gaming, you might have heard of uh, things like uh, strict NAT, moderate NAT and these things can be an issue for gamers because if you have those issues you cannot connect to uh, multiple gamers or other people and this is often caused due to double NAT for example now your router is attached and it is doing the NAT functionality but as I've told you in uh, my previous video that most of the modems these days also do have the functionality of a router and by default the NAT is also enabled on them so what is now happening is that you have two NATs that's called double NAT and this can cause issues and to fix this you have to simply just disable the router functionality on your modem and uh, it can be done by setting your modem this is your modem in bridged mode if you do that then the NAT functionality of your modem will be disabled and then your router will handle the NAT. So this is how you can avoid issues like double NAT. So I hope now you have a better understanding of uh, NAT, DHCP server and double NAT. Now you might ask me why do we need things like router and uh, NAT in the first place? Why can't we just assign a public IP address to uh, from our uh, ISP to every device that we own? The problem is actually uh, currently uh, we are still stuck on IP uh, address version 4 which has a limit of 2 to the power of 32 approximately about as I said about 4.3 billion IP addresses and not all of them are actually available uh, right away and so the issue is as if you have noticed in a typical house for example as I mentioned earlier uh, I have just uh, uh, ISP that gives me a single IP address. I have my router and I have at least 10 devices that are attached to this. The problem is with the current limitation of IP version 4, there are simply not enough IPs to satisfy the demand. Hence, NAT is this current solution. IPv6 solves this. But again, we won't get into that in this video. Uh, so in my next episode of Geeky Ranjit Explains, I was planning to take up a topic on Wi-Fi routers. Do let me know. Quite a few of have asked me to talk about that because these days we have a lot of type of Wi-Fi routers, B, G, N, dual band, even the new AC standard. And what are these? So do let me know if you want. Uh, that I take the, up the topic of Wi-Fi orders next week or suggest me any other topics. Thank you. Again, do remember to subscribe to this channel. I post new videos every Thursday here. So thank you for watching this video. This is Ranjit and I hope to see you in my next video.